back to Learn and Lockdown coming to you from Liverpool College. I'm Mr. S. I'm Mr. A. And it's time for maths. First of all, thank you so much for all the work you put into yesterday's lesson on ordering numbers. I hope you had fun with it. I hope you managed to complete all the tasks. The answers, as ever, are down below. Okay, so please do click on those answers. Here's some evidence of where some people have sent to us. So let's have a look at what you've been doing in maths. First of all, this has come from Thomas. He's uh, an avid follower. He's always responding to us, Thomas. And here he is. And this is a photo of his ordering that it was, of his numbers. And then we've got another photo from the young lady from yesterday. But this time we have a name. This is Livy. Yes, well, it's almost exactly the same pose as yesterday. It is. The only difference is what is on the screen. Yesterday she was listening to your voice. Today she's watching you order a pizza. Yeah, sorry about that. I don't like, no one likes to see that big face on their screens, do they? But well done. She's from Worcester. Thank you, Livy. And now, these were the first people to ever feature on our channel. This is Eva and Ben, both listening attentively and fantastic work on ordering the numbers from Eva. And another well done to Ben, who's a little bit younger, isn't he? But he's giving it all a go it's and he's go. doing very well. Well that's done. All we, that's all we ask. Give it a go. Really good to see so many people getting involved with the lessons and showing us what you're doing. We love that. I've got it's... hair on my face. You've got lots of hair on your face. <laughs> okay, it's like... <laughs> Carrying on. Um, yeah, so please do, you know, it encourages us, makes us want to keep doing even more and more when you send us these things. So thank you to the parents as well, especially for getting in touch with us. Now today, we are learning all about rounding. 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 Mr. A. So, why on earth would we want to round numbers? Because what we're talking about when we say we're rounding numbers is, that, let's say we had the number 396. 396, and someone might say, oh, well, let's round it to 400, roughly 400. Well, why on earth would we want this skill? Well, this skill can be useful in real life in lots of ways. Like Mr. Ace just mentioned, if you're in a situation where you happen to count, either counting people or counting objects or even counting money, then if there's lots of numbers or there's lots of sort of specific numbers, it can, it can be quite difficult to count. So if you can give a round number, then that is really useful. But another way that rounding is really useful is just in your other calculations in maths. If you're able to round to the nearest 10 or to 100, it can make counting on past that or subtracting beyond that much, much easier. So it's a crucial skill that we all have to learn. Yes, it is, Mr. S. So we're going to look at, well, a number of different ways to round today. We're going to look at rounding to the nearest 10, nearest whole 10, thinking about that place value again. Rounding to the nearest whole 100. Round to the nearest whole 1,000. We would do 10,000, we're going to do 100,000, and we could do million, but you're gonna be able to figure out those ones that we miss out. And your tasks today are a little bit more of a game than a task. We recognize that the last two days we've been setting just very much questions and answers, but it's time to have a bit of fun with this, because yes. we're boring, so you might as well have some fun when you're not watching our videos. So, Mr. S, can we please give me three two digit numbers and we're going to round each of these to the nearest 10. Thank you Mr S. So let's start with that top number. That top number, say it at home with me. Speed up. Come on, we like a bit of uh, engagement in this. Yell at the screen, it's fine. No one's going to be worried. So we've got the number 42. Now, if we're rounding to the nearest 10, we want to think about what whole 10s this number comes between. Now you might go, what's a whole 10? Well, if you know how to count in tens, if you know your 10 times table, those are whole tens. For example, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 even counts as a whole 10. 110, 120, and it goes on. So let's look at 42. What two whole tens does that come between? Well, it comes after 40, and it comes before 50. Now I know some of you are looking at this number line already and going, hmm, there's a little mark in the middle. And I know what comes halfway between 40 and 50. It is 45. And we're going to need that middle number later. So where would Mr. S 42 go on our number line? Well, I obviously know that 42 is, is larger than 40 and I know that it's less than 45. So I know it's going to come somewhere between here. Now I actually know what is exactly halfway between there. It's actually two and a half. So if you know that as well, that can even help you out. So I know it's going to be just a bit below halfway between these two numbers. So I'm going to put 42 there. Fantastic. Now, when you hear the question round 42 to the nearest 10, 
It literally is as simple as it sounds. What is the nearest 10 to 42? Well, it's not 50. He's all the way over there. It must be 40. So 42 rounded to the nearest 10 is roughly equal to or rounded to, and you'll see why I'm doing this. Nice. Roughly equal to 40. So this sign here, our wave equal sign, means approximately equal to. It's important that we don't put an equal sign because then it won't make sense, will it? It'll say 40. Two equals 40, which isn't true, Not but true. it's approximately equal to it, rounds to 40. So make sure you get that sign right. Let's try 58. What two whole tens does that come between? Well, it comes after 50 and before 60. If you're finding it difficult to work out which tens come before it, because I've known children in my class to find that a bit difficult, it's simply a case of looking what you've got in your tens column. There's a 50 there, so 50 must have been the last whole tens number. Brilliant. And halfway between would be 55. So, Mr. S, where will 58 go? Again, it's bigger than 55, it's smaller than 60, it's a little bit closer towards the 60, I know, so I'm gonna put it here. So, what is the nearest 10? What is 58 round to the nearest 10? Well, 50 is all the way over here, 60 is much closer. So 58 rounded to the nearest 10 is roughly equal to 60. Let's try the last one. 85. Now, that comes after, use Mr. S's trick, 80. 80. And I know the next tens number after 80 must be 90, so that's the next one. And we know what comes in between. It's 85. But, oh, this is the number we're trying to round. Sorry, yeah. This is the number that we're trying to round. And I don't know about you, but if I look at that, I see that it is exactly halfway between. So do we just get to just choose each time? I think, well, maybe this time we'll go back. Maybe this yeah. time it's in the middle. So, yeah, must or be. is there a rule? There is a rule. You see, because 85 is not nearer to 80 or 90, we have to follow this rule. And it is, if this number here, not in the tens column, but in the ones, the number to the right is five or more, and we'll look at that in a second, then we round it up. So if the number to the right of the column that we're trying to round to, we're rounding to the nearest 10, so we look to the right, we look at the ones, if that is five or more, we round up. Hmm. So 85 rounded to the nearest 10 is 90, or roughly equal to 90. Now at this point we should share a little rule, because we know that the numbers between 80 and 85 are 81, 82, 83, and 84. So, the numbers all have the 80 in it, but the column to the right, the ones, has the digits 1, 2, 3, or 4. 81, 82, 83, 84. And our rule is simple. If the number next door is 1, 2, 3, or 4, we round it down to the floor. If the number next door is 1, 2, 3, 4, we round it down to the floor. I made that up on the spot. Ah. <laughs> Okay, so of course, and let's see what I can come up with. If the number next door is five or more. Five, six, seven, eight, or nine. If the number next door is five or more, round it up, that's for sure. So, see you later. Oh man, what a so, team. I can't remember what they are though. But basically, yeah, if the number- if the number next door is one, two, three, four, we round it down to the floor. If the number next door is, is five or more. Five or more, we round, round it, it up, up that's and for that's sure. for sure. Clear as mud. Clear as mud, absolutely. So that's round to tens. Let's try a few hundreds. We'll try two hundreds, then we'll go on to the thousands and ten thousands. Now, now, we've got, I'm only going to do two numbers for this one. We've got some hundreds. Now, we could still round these to the nearest ten. Let's just try that with one of them. 243. If we were counting in tens, we could have 210, 220, 230, 240, 250. And I know 240 comes before it, and 250 comes afterwards. With 245 in between, well, 243. And with these number lines, you don't really? have to get exactly in the right place, okay? Because that wouldn't be possible all the time. As long as you're roughly in the right place, you'll, it'll definitely help you to, to round the numbers. So this one rounds down, because it's closer to 200. 
and 40. So even with three digit numbers, we can round to the nearest 10. But we're not looking at that now. We're looking at rounding, not to the nearest 10, but to the nearest 100. So let's take 243. And this time, the nearest 100, we want to count in hundreds. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and it goes on. 243, Mr. S, what does it come between? Well, again, I look at the hundreds column and I think, well, there's 200 in there, so 200 must have been the last hundreds number that it went past. And then simply a case of counting on in hundreds, well, what comes after 200? It's 300, simple enough. And then in between, well, halfway between zero and 100 is 50. So I know that between my hundreds number is always 50. So this is 250, because after 200, before 300, so 250. Right, 243, where's that going to go? Well, again, I need to just be roughly right here. I don't need to get exactly right. And I have a look. Well, if that's 250 and that's 200, 243 is probably somewhere around there. Now, we made up some rules before. If the number next door is 1, 2, 3, 4, you round it down to the floor. Well, we're rounding to the nearest hundreds. So let's look next door. Hello, who's there? There's number four. It's number four. The number next door is 1, 2, 3, 4. So we round it, look, down to the floor. So 243 to the nearest 100 is roughly equal to 200. Make sure when you round down that you do round down to the last 100 because I know again from my classroom that sometimes children round down and they'll go all the way back to 100. 100 before that. Yeah, they'll go all the way to 100. But that isn't right. The 100 number that came just before 243 was actually 200. So be careful of that when you're doing the task later on. Right, I'm going to speed on up. 361, that comes between the 100, 300 and 400. Mr. S before said that 50 is halfway between our 100, so this middle one must be 350. Placing our 361. Uh, about here. 361. And we can see it's closer to the 400. Let's also try Mr. S's fantastic little rhyme. We're rounding to the nearest 100, so we're gonna go next door to there. If the number next door is five or more, you round it up, and that's for sure. Cheesy. You, eh, you've got it. 400 it is. 361 is roughly equal to 400. We're going to jump miles ahead and do one more example, but let's say, let's have a six digit number. Let's round to the nearest 100,000. Whoa! 243,000, we're in the thousands family, remember from Monday, 450. Now I am going to round this, I could round it to the nearest tens, and I'd have to count up in tens. Yep. I could round to the nearest hundreds, and I'd have to say 243,000, 400, 243,000, 500, 243,600, go on forever. I could round it to the nearest thousands, 243,000, 244,000, 245,000. I could round to the nearest ten thousands. In fact, we'll do just that. So, 243,000. What was the 10,000s before that? So I look at the 10,000s column and I can see that it's... So I look at the 10,000s column and I can see that it's 243,000. So 240,000 is the 10,000s number that comes before our number here. And in a simple way of counting on in steps of 10,000, the next number must be 250,000. Now we know in between, oof, we've got 240,000, 250,000. Halfway between 40 and 50 would be 45. I just need to translate that into thousands. 245,000. Now I'm on 243. We can actually ignore all these other digits out there. Much, yeah. We can forget about them. When we're thinking, we just need to think really of these numbers. 243,000, 245,000. Well, it's going to come, let's say, Mr. S, roughly. Yeah, I'm not going to write the number out because I won't fit it in, but we can clearly see where I think that number is going to go. And we can see that is closer to 240,000. Let's check the rule. We were rounding to the nearest 10,000. Well, if the number next door is one, two, three, four, we round it down to the floor. The rule worked. It would work if we went to any of these columns, even if the number went up to millions. Yep. Do not be put off or scared by having really large numbers. It doesn't make a single difference to our rule. Just think about what you're rounding. So you go to that column and then look next door to see what you've got to next do. Next door to the right. 
So, that is it for today. Your tasks are below. They're little games. If you do get confused, maybe show your mums and dads, aunties and uncles, whoever's looking after you, our little video, and they should be able to explain it. But we've gone on. There's no watch there. We've gone on long enough, so we'll leave it now over to you. Remember, if the number next door is one, two, three, four, we round it down to the floor. And if the number next door is five or more, we round it up, that's for sure. We should get that trademark, shouldn't we? Really? Copyright. Copyright. Remember, send us evidence of you doing tasks. Thank <laughs> you.